Well, the roar is here, folks. Listen, here's what we realize is that we've prophesied for the last year that there would be micro winds that would accumulate into a roar. And the roar is absolutely here. And you recognize it because the way that things are 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 hitting the scene, the way things are happening uh, in everything from the uh, the hearings over January 6th to what's happening all around uh, the nation and the nations, this roar is truly here. Now, I, I you know, we've prophesied backlash, we've prophesied a lot of these things, but I got to tell you, there's going to be many unprecedented uh, victories, rulings, turning of the narrative and all this. Wickedness is on its heels for a moment in several arenas, but there's also going to be like, like the Bible teaches us very clearly that light and darkness will rise at the same time. There'll be challenges. There'll be all this, but you know, the good news is, is the Lord by no means has forsaken his people. By no means is he uh, holding back on his people. And you've got to recognize this because so many would look at this and say, my goodness, challenge and difficulty are here. You know, what do we do next? How do we begin to rise in the middle of this present evil age? Well, the truth is, is that Jesus never leaves you nor forsakes you. Now, if you would, please consider sharing this right away, getting the word out to somebody. We're going to talk about just a few things today because I believe the Lord has a, a now word for you, a word that will bring victory and encouragement to you and strength will begin to rise out of darkness and it's going to begin uh, rapidly coming into your life and into your children's life, your family's life and the future of where God's called you to be. Now, I, I really strongly sense that there, there's not only economic issues happening, I think the Manchurian candidate is going to have some days of reckoning now. I think it's coming. You know, they just found a voicemail of him talking to his son, Hunter, where they began to, uh, he said, you know, I've never, I've never uh, talked about his business dealings with China or other places. And here we see in this recording, he's do- talking directly about that. And that's happening. Now, there's a lot of this that's going to continue to come forward in the narrative. What does that mean? What does that spell out for us? Well, it spells out the potential of a major victory for at least the perceived good guys in 2022 midterms. It looks that way. It looks like there's going to be, as we prophesied, a bloodbath. And then Ted Cruz came out and said the same words, bloodbath. Uh, bloodbath of victory, meaning that darkness was going to be put on its heels. Now, Anytime you say darkness is going to be put on its heels, it's going to be difficult for them, there's always that backlash. And the backlash will inevitably come. It will inevitably, you know, uh, hit the, the scene. But the, the good news is, is strength is here. In the middle of all this challenge, strength is here. And so inevitably we wrestle with uh, the natural. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but there are natural things that, that seem to be occurring. So that's the deal. Um, and I'm just telling you right now that Jesus is going to continue to make a great way of not only provision and escape, but a great way of advancement and, and the truth of the gospel coming forward. Uh, so all of this. No, uh, sometimes when I'm, when I'm on assignment and I'm doing things, we just go, um, we go from the car, we go from, you know, vehicles or things like that. So I may be doing this just for a couple of days and then we'll be back in the studio shortly. So people are like, what are you, what are you doing in the car? Well, you know, just, uh, it's, it's my favorite place to pray and hang out. <laughs> so no, we'll be, back, we'll be back in the studio very soon, but it's important that we, you know, we just go live as much as we can. I believe God, here's something about this guys. Now, listen, if, if you don't mind listening carefully, uh, several years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, go live every single weekday morning, you know, as, if, uh, as often as you humanly can do it. And very rarely, every now and then we don't go live and we announce that. But normally we're live every single weekday morning. And the reason is, is because I have a word from God to do it. And when I have a word from God to do something, I just do it. I do what God asks me to do. And I believe the Lord is calling us to a heightened level of prophetic journalism to bring victory and, and light and darkness. Now, the roar of the Lord Lord is here. And the roar of the Lord is found in his righteous ones. It's found in you. It's found in your life. The roar of God is here. We've prophesied that the the micro winds or small victories, small victories would accumulate into the roar of the Lord. It would roar through his people. It would roar through circumstances and roar in a way that would bring light into darkness. And this is happening right now. The roar is here. So, 
Uh, what I want to say to you is this, is that Jesus is bringing a great, not only awakening, but he's bringing a great movement through many people that are going to begin to surrender to him, surrender to him. And so this is where we are right now. Now, what's going to happen going into this midterm scenario? Well, I believe people that are watching their portfolios be impacted by the stupidity of these um, these characters who are are crushing economics, they're doing stuff, and people say, "Oh no, it's it's Russia's fault that the economy has had troubles. It's Russia's fault. It's this. It's that." Well, the only reason the economy has had issues is probably because of all those stimulus things people gave away and all the issues with that. That's been a real legitimate challenge that's taken place, and so we've got to begin to recognize where this stuff is. And a lot of people that are losing portfolios and financial issues uh, are are beginning to recognize that that it is truly this regime and evil government that's allowing some of this stuff to happen on their watch. Now, what you and I both have to realize and all of us have to recognize is that Jesus has called us to a very high understanding of victory uh, in this time. And I believe we're going to begin to see much of that. And it, and it will come with collision. It will come with all of that. Now, there's also, I don't know if you saw this, but it's so funny, the, the January 6th uh, hearings and all the nonsense people are pushing about that and how that looks and operates. But there's a lot of victory that's going to come, honestly, just because thinking people are going to say enough is enough and they're going to begin to uh, uh, speak up about things at a, at a heightened level. And so that's where that is headed right now. Now, when you realize that the midterms are on the way, the midterms are on the way, there's going to be um, a great uh, rising and shining, and there's going to be, um, I, I think, a real turn of a narrative that we're going to begin to see. Now, could it just be that the rhinos will get empowered? Well, it could be. It could just be that the rhinos will get empowered, that there'll be this kind of nonsense going on that begins to bring even more uh, stupidity to the scene. <laughs> we could see some more of that. But the truth is, I do believe there's going to be a change now. And the change is upon us. Not only has the Great Awakening been prophesied and some of these narratives coming out, but also there's going to be um, a change of the guard, so to speak. Now, this change of the guard, they'll try to shake things up. They'll try to get footing for the 24 election, and it's all in motion. But we've got to rejoice because there are victory. There is victory happening right now. There's victory for you and I. There's victory happening for so many people uh, uh, with those that are standing for righteousness, that there is indeed a shout of godliness that's coming forward and the world is even hearing it. Now, I want to say this to you. The fact that Roe v. Wade was overturned has so many more ramifications than just, yay, you know, a life for the unborn, that kind of thing. There's a lot more ramifications to it. What it was, was a rebuke to darkness. Now, it was probably uh, a month and a half ago. I stood outside and I was sno it was snowing in the video I was standing in. And I released a word saying, a strong rebuke is coming to the unrighteous. A strong rebuke. Then we prophesied about the earthquakes that would begin to come. And an earthquake would come. And followed by that earthquake would come a sign that God was judging unrighteousness. And so I see these things in types and shadows, and then they called the events with Roe v. Wade a political earthquake. Well, I know Brett Baer came out in Fox News and said it was a political earthquake, but the truth of the matter is it was just straight up a spiritual earthquake because it shot into and it, it defied, it defied the spirits of murder, the spirits of genocide, the spirits of trying to kill the unborn. And yet what we're going to see is this, there's going to be a, a movement now of righteousness coming out of this. There's going to be a changing up of this narrative. Light is going to shine in darkness. I'm telling you, victory is going to come out of this and there's going to be a lot more of that happening. Now, I know there's more rulings to take place. I know there's more things that could absolutely go the other way that we're not looking for, but I'm telling you, you got to begin to recognize Jesus is doing something powerful in the middle of evil, in the middle of darkness. So they only have a few other options now. They're going to have to begin to push the climate change narrative to try to get that lockdown discussion going again. And I know that sounds very unique, and uh, they might not be able to do it for a, quite a while. 
because they want to really shove that narrative down our throat. And the lockdown narrative is something they want. When when uh, COVID broke out and all these things happened, it was a leftist's dream. They wanted this. And I'm not saying they caused it. I'm not saying it wasn't real. It all had a lot of validation to it. But here's the issue. The, the, the Democrats and the people on the other side, they love that stuff. They love anything that involves control and making people shut up and sit down. They loved it. And they're looking for how they can continue keeping that. Now we've prophesied also that farmers would stand up and that's beginning to happen in the Netherlands. You're seeing that rise up right now. There's, there's a, a rising up of farmers in the Netherlands. I do sense there's another wave of that because people are saying, Hey, uh, uh, we we're losing territory and you've got, uh, uh, people like Pervy Gates that is buying up land and buying up resources in the United States. And of course, you see the Red Dragon, Communist China, all this buying up land and resources. But I still sense strongly because, listen, if you don't mind, I sense strongly because we have pushed back on the spirit of murder in this nation that there is indeed going to be a time of grace. And the Lord even spoke to me economic grace, even if the stock market rumbles and crumbles and things begin to fall apart and uh, land and, and housing and all this becomes a challenge. Here's what I want to say to you. It would have been so much worse had we not leaned into this, okay? And uh, people are commenting about a second pandemic. Well, I think that they would love that. If they can make that happen at any moment, they would love that. The reason they would love it is because it's tied to control. Now, this is a strange thing, and I've talked about this, and I'm going to talk about it again here right now. And that is the narrative of they will begin to push for climate change lockdowns or climate lockdowns. This may uh, have been pushed back for a season, but mark my words, one day that narrative will come out strong and they'll begin talking about it. And I've had people also sending me article after article now on this UFO narrative. Now, Again, as I talk about a UFO narrative, please realize I'm not a crazy person. And UFOs, um, here's what I want to say. There are no such thing as aliens. There's one of three things. It's either um, government stuff that we don't know about, heightened technology that they're using to, to trick people uh, for control. Or secondly, it is... Um, it is a false flag narrative where they can use what it, some people have labeled it Project Bluebeam, where they begin to blast images in the sky and say it's this, that, or the other thing, and people see it all simultaneously because it's induced. Or thirdly, it's truly demonic entities doing things that are out to deceive. All three of them are nefarious and terrible in origin. Now, there are no such thing as aliens, okay? Uh, God created things the way he created it. There's, there's a lot of scenarios around this, but there is deception and and there are demonic supernatural beings that could try to deceive. And I think that is a narrative we're going to hear more and more about as the end approaches. And so you can see that now. In this same picture with that, I believe all of these things will begin to come forward and, and begin to uh, present themselves more and more. You're going to see more of this UFO narrative, more disclosure, more revealing, and they're going to prove it and prove it and prove it. But listen to me, just because they prove something in a, popu a, a popular way doesn't mean that it's legit. It just means that there is a deception. You know, a lot like what happened with the last election, a lot like what happened with the... Um, uh, the pandemic and the way they controlled people and said, put these face diapers on, even though they have no real value whatsoever, put them on, make your kids wear them. And you still have a lot of ignorant people that wear them having no idea what science even says about it, but it's all speculation and fear and fear is more motivating than truth. Okay. And that's why you see a lot of these things happening. Now, where I think this is headed, where I think it's all headed it is really depending on what the church chooses to do. If the church keeps laying back on its heels and saying someone else will handle it, uh, and the church doesn't rise as a united front, well, then we're going to see more and more difficult days. If the church rises as a united front, we will see a turn of the tide. We will see many things begin to change. We will see victory rising out of darkness. Now, there's a lot of this that's going to continue coming rapidly. There's a lot of this that's going to begin to uh, 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 hold back the the er the the narrative of evil, and you're going to see more and more victory coming into the scene. Now, 
I just want to say so much about this, that Jesus is Lord and there's strength that's happening right now. Um, it, it is hilarious watching what's, what's unfolding both politically, what's unfolding around the world, what's unfolding in the news. And you're seeing so much of these things that just honestly, people don't even know what to do with all the information that they're hearing. And fear seems to be the hopeless, crushing voice that's out there. Now, I'm going to say this even prophetically if I can. And if you can hear me, uh, please really pay attention to this, if you would. I believe that God always has a way of escape. And by way of escape, I believe the Lord is making a strong uh, momentum. He's calling people to a strong momentum. And I think there's going to be a shocking turn of events for the good, okay? A shocking turn of events for the good. But in that same shocking turn of events, there's going to be a challenge also. And this challenge is this, is that number one, I think many of the prophets that prophesied things several years ago now saying this will happen, 45's getting in, all this stuff's going to unfold. I believe that we know in part, we prophesy in part. And there's a thing called revelation, interpretation, and application. And just because people didn't see things happen in the timeline they predicted does not mean that there will not still be something very good coming out of all of this. And I think it's going to happen. I think some very good things are still going to unfold and hit the scene. Um, there is a very strong momentum on God rearranging people, rearranging their footing, changing the narrative and getting things in a way where everybody's getting positioned for the next wave, the next run, the next time that they're called to be in. I believe this is a word for you. God is repositioning many people. If the Lord's tugging on your heart, you must obey it. You must do what God's telling you to do. I believe many people are going to be repositioned in this season, get their footing, begin to see what the Lord's called them to do, what he's called them to operate in. I know for us, for example, we have many churches uh, going into you know the summertime and into the fall. We're going to be in a lot of churches again all over the country and places because we're just, you know, we're answering that call to do it. And we're saying yes to, to so many places and getting our footing there again, because we believe the local church is the very foundation of what God's called us to be a part of, uh, to, to begin to push things back. And the local church needs to be encouraged. The local churches need to be strengthened. The local churches uh, need to rise and shine. And I love going to local churches and ministering there, loving on people, honoring the pastors. And uh, that's what we do. And a lot of people say, Joseph, are you going to come in there and talk about crazy political stuff? Nope. Nope. We come in and encourage the people. We come in and encourage the pastors. We preach the word of God and we stand in authority. Now, there is light shining in darkness. Now, I want to say something about this. Many people send political uh, articles or, or current news that really matters. We have a Facebook group called uh, Voice of God with Joseph and Heather Z. It's a group page. And if you see something that you think that we should talk about or check out, please consider posting articles, unique articles and current news there, because that's going to be more and more of a prophetic journalism page. So I appreciate that when you guys do that. And also the Joseph the app is huge for this. We're going to do more stuff there. And we are gearing up for a powerful, powerful season in front of us. And I think you're going to be very blessed by it uh, with where this is headed. So I want to say this clearly. The Lord is not just on the move, but I remember about a year, maybe two years ago, I remember right after the 2020 election, I had a vision about a lion and the lion was looking down at earth and his eyes were like crystal. And the lion was silent. And I said, what is this? And I saw it. And the lion was watching. And the lion was watching for the right time. And I believe that we're coming into that right now. I believe now is the time where the lion is roaring and the, the micro winds are accumulating into a roar and timing is here. And this, this lion of the tribe of Judah is going to begin roaring. And I believe he's watching. And this is the time where action begins to unfold. And we're going to see this now. So we're going to see a rapid unfolding of these kind of events. Now, Jesus is Lord. We have so much we are doing. This team, what we're building, you know, we're, we're looking at building a new state-of-the-art studio. Uh, we're, we're working towards many of these 
scenarios that we can begin to broadcast even more clearly. Uh, I've been dreaming about broadcasting again, even last night I was having dreams about broadcast. I was dreaming about making disciples through media, reaching the masses, doing what God's called us to do through media. And we're doing it like never before. As a matter of fact, I believe that there is a supernatural wave and God's rearranging some things to get people repositioned for the next part of advancement. And I'm telling you, God's doing this with you. He's doing it with you either internally, by obedience, geographically, whatever it is, God is rearranging what he's doing. And there's certain parts of the nation that have a certain grace on them to do greater things. And I'm seeing this in certain parts of the nation. And we're going to begin visiting those parts of the nation. And the Lord is beginning to bring this, this forward. And this micro winds, people are saying, what are micro winds? Well, it's not winds like air blowing. It's micro winds as in micro victories, winds, like you win a race, micro wins, micro victories. And there's many of those that have happened over the last year. And the Lord said the micro wins would accumulate into a roar. And the roar was heard when Roe v. Wade was overturned. The roar is being heard even towards the economy right now. The roar is here. And God is a miracle God. And just like Nineveh, could be turned around. I believe many things are going to be turned around in a very powerful uh, and unique way. So Jesus is Lord. I want to encourage you right now. I believe God is beginning to bring encouragement to many of you watching, many of you listening, and light will shine in darkness. On a bad day, you're the best there is. Listen, when we say going red, it means that the red church is here. Going red means the blood of Jesus. We're confessing our covenant ability to stand up under a present evil age. Jesus is Lord, and I want to encourage you to encourage yourself in the Lord. In the middle of all this darkness, don't give in to the darkness. If you hang on a little longer, I'm telling you, just like Roe v. Wade was overturned. Like other things, there is going to continue to be victory coming out of this. Now, I encourage you to get our app, the Joseph Z app. Download it. Go to your favorite app store. Download that. We've had over 3,000 people download the app. I'm believing God for 10,000 people to download the app. And the reason is, is we want to make disciples there. We want to do current news there. We want to begin to have ways of communicating through this app so you can be there and get real-time updates on news. You get real-time updates on communication. Anything that's pertinent you want to hear about that we should be talking about, prophetic journalism will be growing on that app and we'll be doing special interviews on there where we don't have to talk in code or say certain things. We will talk directly, name names, name circumstances, because it's free. You can be on there and freedom of speech reigns on the Joseph Z app. And I encourage you to download that right away if you could, because we're going to continue building. So over 3,000 people are already on the app. We have great views on the app and we're going to continue broadcasting directly there. And of course, we're getting a lot of footing and we're getting a lot of traction right now. And it's because of you guys. It's actually because of our partners that we're able to do that. So I encourage you, if you're not a partner, please consider becoming one. You can go to josephz.com to do that. You can you can become a partner or so on the app. You can help a partner with this platform. And we are going to go after this whole scenario uh, like never before. Uh, discipleship through media. Actually, it starts by doing these morning broadcasts every single weekday morning. Uh, we also will have a lot of our teaching material on the app, on our website, all of this. And then we're going to begin to do more and more scenarios like that where people can communicate with one another in groups and whatnot. We're trying to build that on the app. And so we're working diligently. You know, a lot of platforms like this, they don't have apps. And the reason they don't is because apps are kind of an elaborate uh, uh a difficult thing to just build and do, or you have to pay for a platform to build you an app. What we've done is we built our app from scratch. So our app, the one we have, cannot be messed with. We have our own servers with it. It is absolutely secure and it's awesome. So that's why it took a little longer and we're building towards it. So when I talk about discipleship through media, what I'm really pointing at is this app, the Joseph Z app. And we have a lot we're going to do through that. And we're just getting started with its full potential. But the reason it's not as been as quick is some other apps is because we're building it directly. Like we're building that thing from scratch and it's a powerful deal. Nobody can take it away. It's wonderful. And so I encourage you to get it. I encourage you to check it out and you'll see more and more of our videos there. And of course, a growing ability to do discipleship through media 
which means biblical teaching, biblical training, real-time prophetic journalism, and then groups where people can communicate with one another. And we want to make it a place where people can build a culture and a community. So that's what we're working on. And it's it's well on its way. If you go check it out, you'll see a lot of that. So that's what we're doing. Amen. Praveen's like, you know, what, what do you mean? And I'm trying to explain it. There you go. So Jesus is Lord. I love you guys. Thank you so much. If you're a partner, thank you. Uh, an update on the plane is we've uh, ordered the aircraft, you know, a little bit ago, and it's going to take us this next year to probably try to pay it off before we take possession. So we don't have it in our possession, but we have at least made the order. Uh, and many of you have helped us so generously to do that. And we're looking to uh, pay it off, pay it in full before we take possession of it. And they're building it right now. It's a good plane. It's very good. And I've, there's all these stories about people who crash and do all this stuff. And we wanted to get one that we could really utilize for the gospel and all this. And it's going to be very, very powerful. So we're so grateful for you guys. Man, I'll tell you, we got the best partners, the best people. We love you. Jesus is Lord. And I'll tell you, it's going to be a great day in Jesus. So thanks for being here. Please consider reposting this, sharing this everywhere you can. I encourage you to keep praying, keep speaking in tongues, keep keep seeking the Lord Jesus because we're going to push back a lot of this nefarious agenda and we're going to see this roar go to its full capacity and the roar will push back the darkness that is trying to fight everybody. Praise God. Yep, every single weekday morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, that's Colorado time, I go live every single weekday morning, uh, Monday through Friday, and sometimes we do a recap prophecy video on Fridays, or we'll, we'll have a teaching out for you, uh, 7 a.m. on Colorado time, and it's really just a blessing that we can all be together. And uh, we've been doing this for some time, and I believe God is just getting started with the potential of what he's calling you to do. Thank you so much for being here. Please go ahead, go to the Joseph Z, at official Joseph Z on Instagram. Follow us on Truth Social. Uh, if you would, also like and follow us on Facebook. And of course, YouTube. Uh, like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube. I love you. Jesus loves you. Our team loves you. And we got a lot more to do. And thank you for partnering today by going to josephz.com. You guys are awesome. I will see you again very soon. Please repost this, share this everywhere for encouragement, getting people's heart built up. And we'll be back with some very clear prophetic journalism very soon. God bless.